big blind checks now. So I kind of like squarely put him on a seven, to be honest with you, when he checked, um, just from like playing with him in history and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm, about to, I'm gonna make some money here. Gun, another gun plus one, middle position, low jack and high jack, all limp. So like four limps ahead of you? Five. Five, okay. <laughs> Five limps yeah. in front. Okay. Yep. Yep. So I decided to limp. I'm not sure if that was horrible, but I do know that um, a lot of these guys will go broke and limp pots with flushes, two pairs. So figure you get in cheap, you know, see a flop and uh, try yeah. to stack some money. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind over limping in, in some certain spots, especially where there's crazy amount of limpers from up front. You always have to watch the rake and the drop structure because – you know, in an LA game where they drop eight, no matter what the size of the pot is, unless the stacks are really deep, it, it's just really hard to really limp anything because of the amount of money that's going to be taken out. But I don't mind limping like one of the worst suited aces, like ace, deuce, ace, six, ace, seven suited, maybe like some suited connectors, like eight, six, you know, five, seven suited, something like that. I know people are like, oh, it's hard to play multi-way, but he does have the button. And again, I would say... You know, I remind people, people complete all the time with those hands from out of position in the big blind. So I don't think in suddenly, like in the 1-3 game, like someone's going to have a higher squeeze frequency coming out of the blind just because there's five or six limpers of anything that might even check some stronger hands. So I don't mind the play. All right, great. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I wasn't sure, but I think I was, I, those are my along the same thoughts, especially with the A6 or you know, like you said, one of the worst suited aces. So I just, you know, I figured I'd limp. Yeah. Um, small blind completes and big blind checks. Okay. So we're looking at what, seven ways or something? Uh, Eight. Eight ways. Wow. Okay. So eight ways yeah. limped. Okay. Yep. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, the flop is a 10 of hearts, seven of hearts, seven of clubs. 10 of hearts, seven of hearts, seven of clubs. So you flop the nut flush draw, but there's a pair of sevens out there on the board. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, you know, limp pot, so obviously somebody can have the seven, but right. you know, whatever. I still like my hand, right? Right. Um, small blind checks, mm -hmm. big blind, who is going to end up being one of the main villains in the hand. He uh, leads for fifteen. Um, he he plays a lot, but he's super recreational. He's a business owner, nice guy, but um, like his skill doesn't match how much he plays. Okay. You know what I mean, yep. Um, so then it, it folds all the way to the hijack. Mm -hmm. and uh, he calls, and this guy, I haven't played with him too much. I'd probably play half an hour to an hour with this gentleman, um, but my take on him is that he's basically clicking buttons. Like, he 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 was making some really weird plays, so I wasn't too worried about him, but I, I figured if he had anything, I could probably get a good amount of money out of him. Yeah. Um. So, obviously, we call, and then um, small buying flows, and we're off to the turn. So, did you ever think about raising the flop? I thought that maybe you would say you were going to consider raising the flop. Um, I considered it, but, um, I, you know, we play live, um, the gentleman in, uh, the big blind, like he's a type, I, mean, I guess I find out, right. If I raise there, um, and he has a seven, he's coming big, right. He's like, he's, he sees monsters under the bed. Um, I played with him a lot, I played with him at home games. I played with him, um, at the casino a bunch. So I just know that if he has the seven, I can get his whole stack. But if I raise here, and he's going to make it so I cannot call. Right, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because, you know, obviously somebody could be sandbagging here, seven. You know, you wouldn't think recreational players are going to lead out with a seven, although it's possible. But I, I just threw that out at you. I probably like calling here because I think if it gets checked to you on a blank turn, so say like the turn's an officer deuce or something like that, and it gets checked to you, you pretty much know that neither player has a seven. I, I mean, I exactly. think, I don't think that the hijack is going to, if he does have a seven and he's sandbagging, is going to check the turn. So you could even go bet, bet, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, you know, I know you don't make a ton of money bluffing in a game like this, like in an eight-way pot. Usually it's going to be sort of showdown oriented, but I could actually see a scenario where I might go bet, bet on turn and on river uh, to try to get a guy off a 10, especially if a disconnected high card above a 10 comes out. All right. So what's the turn? The turn is bingo, which is three of hearts. Okay. All right, so okay. obviously we love our hand, right? Uh -huh. um, but it's weird, right? Uh, big blind checks now. So I kind of like squarely put him on a seven, to be honest with you, when he checked, um, just from like playing with him in history and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to make some money here. Um, hijack bets 20. And again, this guy feels like he's clicking buttons, but I thought he might have had a smaller flush. 
So I make it 75, knowing that I'll get the rest of his stack, but I also wanted to seven the call. I don't know if that was too big, too small. I don't think it's too big, but I, um, obviously I want to get money in the pot. Um, right. Let's just then, say that. Let's just also say that too. That I mean, if the big blind was actually leading out with a seven, he will check a lot of times now. Obviously on the on exactly, the party, yeah. and that's probably proper. I mean, if you let out with a seven and got two callers, and then the turn was a heart, there's a very good chance that someone actually had a heart draw if you have one of the seven. So okay, so the big blind checks, hijack bets twenty. You make it seventy five. Okay, on the button. Yep, and then we get. I was not. I wasn't ready for this one. The big blind three bets to one fifty five, like almost me. Okay. Um. So like I'm thinking. I'm you no. Know, I obviously I'm thinking through the hand while Hijack decides to make, and I just make his um his decision. Excuse me. And um, I was just and I was like I don't really know. Like this guy bowed up. Like uh, you know he looked he looked strong, but he looked almost like I don't know when I was looking at him. He like looked at me to the side and maybe looked a little scared, but. Um, that's beyond the point. Um, so hijack he, just called, and he's he check raised three bets, right? He leads the flop, check and then he three check bet, yeah. three bets to one fifty five. Hijack calls. So these guys have put in um, one fifty five each. So the pot is three ten. You've put in seventy five, three eighty five, uh, four twenty. It's like maybe four fifty to four seventy five. It seems like, and then. If you were to call, you'd have like three fifty or so left, three forty, something like, like that. Three, like three and a quarter, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's kind of interesting, right? Because I mean, when you have two, of the, I mean, I always sort of say like, uh, you know, if you know none of these guys are gonna fold, you know, just get the money in now. Um, and you, you know, the there's always the off chance of action killing cards that come, but you've got two of the hearts in your hand, so you know the chances that one comes off really is only you know uh there's only seven more what six more right i mean you've got yeah there's mm -hmm. only six more so i would probably just call and play a river here and 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 then you know because i think that you're going to be able to suss out what's going to happen if you know here, here's the scenario what i where i would ever fold in a, in a case like this is somehow if you called maybe the river was like a nine or a jack or i mean obviously the big blind's hand is is entirely random so you know but any you know any kind of kicker that would sort of come in um to a v pipping type of hand and then maybe like if it went shove call you might want to consider folding but i would probably call now make sure nobody makes some sort of crazy hero fold or something like that there aren't a ton of action killing cards uh once in a great while too you know you actually dodge like if a 10 or a three comes, you can actually fold your hand too. So it's almost like equity, you know, waiting for equity to basically reveal itself. Exactly. So All did right, you well, call? Um, no, okay. I actually, I was, I was considered, I was considering raising. I, I probably thought for like 30 seconds, 15, 30 seconds. And, um, you know, I, I would play a lot of life poker. I was just, just staring at my, the big blind opponent. I really wasn't worried about the hijack. Mm -hmm. And um, he just looked super comfy, bro. And I was just like, you know what? Um, I'm going to let it go here. I feel like he has, wow. he has like a 10-7, some crazy shit, right? Oh, my so, God. yeah, I let it go. I wouldn't even consider yep. that. I wouldn't even consider that. Because here's the thing, Lewis. Like, yeah. I just don't know. I mean, I, I understand that the big blind seems like very, very strong by check raise three betting. But I mean, what if he's got like the king high flush or something like this, and the other guy has a seven? I've just seen so met so much weird shit here. That's why I kind of like to call, and then maybe leave myself an escape hatch if something crazy comes on the river. But I mean, it's only eighty bucks for you to call yeah. here, and the pot's like what well, we said. The pot was like four fifty. So I mean, you're getting like five to one. You have the best hand here, one out of six times. Mm, yeah, no, you're. I, that's why after uh, we find out the hands, I was like, I, I actually sent you the email at the table right there. Oh yeah, <laughs> right there, bro. Because I was like, you're like, how do I? I was like, do I make the wrong? Like that. Make, I, when I'm thinking about like, how do I call this? Like I was wanting to raise, but like, how do I call this? And then he jams. Um, like I just feel like he. I, do I call the river? You know I'm going to tell like, you that so most I feel like of I call the turn. I have to call the river, right? Well, most of the time, if I the way that I would have played this as a, as a call, most of the time, if the river doesn't obviously double pair the board, and um, this guy shoves, I'll probably call him heads up. If it goes shove call, it's somewhat interesting if you think the hijack is clueless. But I just think it's a better way to play the hand. Anyway, so you folded. What's the reveal? 
or the 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 river is a queen of diamonds, uh, and then uh, Big Blind has exactly what you said. King had king four of hearts, oh, and then God. um yeah, I was sick. Bro. Oh God! And then, <laughs> the crazy thing is, is that the high uh, low jack he was like um or hijack says uh oh you ha- I, you're just bigger than mine and folded so. Oh, he had a flush too. No. Well, you, right. You Bro, never. I you never sick. saw. So, sick. so what happened on the river? Did the big blind shove? Oh yeah. Sorry. Um, big blind shoved. Mm. Um, uh, hijack snapped and then reveals. Oh. And I'm like, I'm sick. I'm looking at him like, oh my god. You know. And there was a little bit of history. I know it's not that important, but a little bit of history between me and the big blind. So that's why I was. I was kind of like, you know, I, I didn't think he would raise me there because normally he doesn't. Um, but. The other thing too yeah, is, I mean, let's let's look at the river real quick. Like I said, I, I think I said the the pot would have been for like right around if you had called the pot would have been a little bit over five hundred. You guys would have had about maybe three twenty, three thirty left if everyone started with about yep. five hundred. So at the end, if he shoves three thirty into like five hundred, the pot's going to be like eleven fifty ish, three thirty for you to call. And I really, really find, I mean, even at that point, man, getting those pot odds, I probably just call off. So, you know, looking back at it, doing the math a couple streets ahead, you know, is there a case for just getting it in on the turn? I still think call, call is better, to be perfectly honest with you. And it kind of protects you if a 10 comes off or, like I said, if a three comes off or another seven comes off, it's just going to be very, very unlikely that another heart is going to fall off. So, you know, even if it goes shove call, uh, unless you pick up some sort of crazy read or something, you know, it, the hijack like jumps out of his seat or something like that. I, I just think it's yeah. clear, you know, you're probably going to have to go call call, but yeah, you were getting incredible fl- uh, turn pot odds, which is sometimes, sometimes misunderlooked by a lot of people. I mean, it's not quite the same as river pot odds where the hand's over, right. And you're getting five to one, yeah. but I'd still look at it. Like, do I have the best hand here? One out of six times right now. I know that there can be obviously equity that can, Cards that can come that can kill my hand, but yeah, I, that's uh, I wouldn't have made that full. But uh, nice talking to you, Lewis. I appreciate the call. Thank you very much.